I want to create a stem plot with the following data. When you create a stem plot, you have to decide how you're going to split the number. When I look at this data set, I notice that I start at 1,661 and I go all to, down to 2,268. Also notice right now that it's sorted. If it wasn't sorted, um, I would make it sorted. And the way I would do this on Excel, for example, I would highlight my entire data set and then hit this button up here that says A to Z. It's sort ascending when you leave the uh, mouse on it. And when I click on it, it would uh, order the data set. So I need to decide, do I divide it by the thousands, split it in the thousands? If I do so, I'm going to have just two columns one for a thousand and one for two thousand so that's not very uh, detailed so what I'm going to do next is try to divide it in this by the hundreds so for example if I divide it by the hundreds the first number would be 16 for 1600 the next number would be 1700 1800 1900 2000 2100 and it goes all the way up to 2200, so I can stop right there. This would be my stem. This represents the classes on a histogram. So on a histogram, you had the classes, and you had to decide how, why you're going to make the classes. On a stem plot, you have very little choice as to how you're going to create the class. You can only do so using our numbering system. And then I'll show you something you could do uh, to kind of modify that a bit and give you a little more leeway. So now that I got my stem, I need to create the leaves. Now notice how many digits I have in this number. Since uh, I'm incrementing by 100s each time, that means the unit that represents the entire data set should be in the tens unit. The leaf will represent the data value. The stem just shows me how I'm subdividing or distributing the number set. So I'm going to do the following here. I'm going to make it. So suppose I decide I'm going to trim the rest of the uh, numbers. What does that mean? It means that after the hundreds unit, I'm going to use the tens unit as my leaf. But what about the rest of the numbers? I discard them. They're not there. So, for example, this number just becomes 166. But the next one, 167. 171. 173. 180. Oh, and so on. So when I start to graph, it would look something like this. It would be 1,660, but the 6 is the only thing that makes it. The next number is 1,670, but the 7 is the only thing that gets placed. 1,710, the 1 for the tens unit is the only thing that gets placed, and so on. So using this, see if you can create the rest of the stem plot, and I'm going to pause for a moment. So here's, here's the rest of the numbers, and I'm going to place them. I've got the 3, and 4, 8, 9, 1, Again, the method I use to break up the last part to create the leaf is called trimming. This is the trim method. What's the other method? Rounding. So let me show you what rounding will look like. Again, if I'm going to round, I'm going to round to the tens unit. 
So for example, what would happen if I round now? Again, 1,661 would become, again, just 1,660. Again, I'm rounding to the nearest. Again, I'm putting the zero there just to make sure that you realize I am rounding. I'm not going to display the zero. I'm just going to display, again, the tens unit. So the rest of these, I'm not going to show you the uh, zero. So 1,713 would be... 10. So notice right now it seems to be exactly the same, but notice the next one, 1,737, when I round, be 1,740. So a 4 goes instead of a 3. So you should get practically the same picture, but there will be some differences. Like right here, 848 will be 1,850. And here's the rest of the numbers by rounding, and everything I've highlighted in yellow has uh, changed from the previous method, which is trimming. So when I put the numbers again, it's going to very look very similar. Again, the first one's 6, 7. As a matter of fact, it looks identical unless uh, you see a different marker. And so the very first bar looks identical, really. And here's the first difference. Oh. And notice that that one value now is going to get shifted over here. So there's one difference in that column. And there's the stem plot using the rounding. Now here's a different data set. It looks almost identical to the last one, but there is a major difference. Look at the uh, smallest number, and look at the largest number, and you'll notice that you're going to find quite a range between them. So again, we come to this decision, if you can create a stem plot, what is going to be your stem? Suppose I decide to make it a hundreds again. But if I make it by the hundreds, you'll notice that what I'm going to have is a lot of empty space. For example, I'll start at the 700s, then I'll go to the 800s, which is nothing there. Then I'll go to 900s, two values. Then empty space, nothing for the 1,000, nothing for the 1,100, nothing for the 1,200. Finally, I get one value, one value for 1,400, one value for, well, one, two, three. You get a few values for 1,500, but it's too spread out. It doesn't show clumping. I want to be able to show clumping. I don't want to clump it too much, but I don't want to clump it so little that it looks all spread out. That means I only have one other choice. Break it up in the thousands. Now, there's a problem with that, though. If I break it up in the thousands, what am I going to have? I'm going to have basically three different columns. Under a thousand, a thousand, and two thousand. And that's it. Three classes is just not enough to show how things are clumped together. It's too clumped. So it seems like I have no way out of here. One's too big, one's too little. But here comes this idea called the split stem plot. And I'm going to break it up into thousands. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two instances of each stem. So when it goes under a thousand, I'm going to mark under a thousand by zero, zero. Again, remember this is the thousands unit. I'm going to say I have zero thousands. The next one's going to be one and one. That means I get a thousand, a thousand, and then two and two again for two thousand, two thousand. Now. What exactly does this mean? Well, let me, again, use the trim method for a second. And I'm going to trim all my data values before I plot them. Again, I don't really have to do that, but uh, I'm doing it for you so you see where numbers are coming from. So I'm going to pause this, and then we'll start plotting them. 
Okay, and here are the values trimmed. Again, notice that I'm going to discard uh, the rest of the values. The only thing that I want to graph here as far as the leaf is concerned is the hundreds unit. So notice I have 7 for 700, and that's going to be the leaf. So here's under 1,000, and here's under 1,000. So which one do I put it in? I've split the 1,000 under 1,000 evenly. So this is from 0 to 500, not including 500. This one is from 500 all the way to 1,000, not including 1,000. So this is 700, 700, 700, 700 get placed right here. 700, 700, 900, 900. All of these are over 500. So this range right now goes from 500, including 500, all the way to 1,000, but don't include 1,000. Okay, I'm ready to plot the next set. Notice this is 1,300. This is from 1,000 all the way to 1,500. So the 300 goes right here. The next one is 400. That marks these two. But the next one is 1,500. And again, this goes all the way up to 1,500, but it does not include 1,500. 1,500 is included in the next one. This one goes from 1,500 all the way to 2,000, not including 2,000. So I'm going to put the 15s here. How many do I have? i got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I have a 700, 800, 900, and another 900. And that marks the next set. Now I'm in the 2000s. Again, notice 2000 will go into this slot right here. Then 2100, again, under 500, so meaning 2500. So I'm going to place it here. 